Today on the channel, I'm reacting to Brit Pierce's watch collection or watch Gringa's watch collection. Gringa's watch, Brit, Brit's watch collection. Welcome back to the Chess of Hunter channel. My name is Harrison as always, and let's crack. I love seeing other people's watch collections because I normally can't afford them, but I just like talking about them. Today, we're looking at my entire watch collection. And just to start, that is some pretty damn powerful watches. So we've got a Rolex Daytona ceramic dial or ceramic bezel. We've also got a Rolex Oyster Perpetual, a Cartier, some kind of Cartier. The face is pretty whited out and an Amiga Speedmaster. Not sure why the Amiga Speedmaster is on a leather strap, but we'll talk about that later. Honestly, in this last year and just seeing these all laid out, I feel like my collection's gotten a little bit out of control, especially if we're including Casios and G-Shocks, which I didn't bring out or else this video would be over an hour long. Casios and G-Shocks are absolutely incredible watches. I do not think there is one Casio or G-Shock that would get critiqued in the industry because they're just so goddamn good. And that pink and blue, I would wear that. That's I mean, it's weird to say, but I like it. And it's been a while since I've done a video like this, probably about two years now, but I've gone down to the safety deposit box. I've picked up all my watches, so let's talk about them. I'm not gonna do this in any particular order. I feel like I should have thought about this before I started. Let's start with what's on my wrist, because that feels like a logical place to start. So today I'm wearing my Tudor Black Bay 54. This is my newest watch pickup. So I just got this a few days after it was announced at Watches and Wonders this year. The Black Bay 54 is a bit of a, it's a weird one within the industry because a lot of people really didn't like it. A lot of people said that it was too plain, too small. However, I think that's kind of what they were going for. When we look at the Black Bay 58 or scale up to the Black Bay Heritage, which I actually own, it is a little bit more quirky. It is hypothetically, or, or it kind of is true, it is a bit more busy and it's a bit more bold. Whereas this one kind of stripped everything back to simplicity. And I think that that's maybe why Brit likes this watch. Now they did take things away that I'm not really sure why they took away. For example, they took away the red splash on the bezel. They also took away the minute markers on the bezel, the one to 15 minute markers, because it would be that little bit too busy when they slimmed it down. And they also, they got rid of the Snowflake second hand. Now I love the Snowflake second hand. I thought it was kind of deep rooted in Tudor's history. So I'm not sure why they replaced it with the Lollipop second hand. However, I can get behind it. I think this watch, in terms of simplicity, looks great. However, if you want something that little bit more quirky, that's something a little bit more different with perhaps a little more personality, I would go with the Heritage or the 58. Out of all my watches, this one probably receives the most wrist time. It's either this or my Rolex Oyster Perpetual. Rolex Oyster Perpetual, I'm sure we'll talk about that later. That is awesome. Okay, let's move on to the first watch roll now. <coughs> Okay. <laughs> wow, well, that's quite a <laughs> weird price differences there. You've got a Moon Swatch and with a Tudor, you've got another Tudor, 58, and you've got a Cartier. This is quite the breadth of watches we have here. So we have my dress watch in my Cartier Santos, a real Thule sports watch in the Black Bay 58, and uh, we have the moon swatch. I don't know how to word this. <laughs> Let's start with this watch, my Cartier Santos Dumont. So the Santos was one of the few luxury watches that I really liked even before I was into watches but I got this Cartier Santos Dumont two-tone for my 30th birthday from my husband. So firstly, let's start there. Let's start with the sentimental attachment of the Cartier. Whenever it comes to watches, I feel they need to be linked to a memory. And the fact that Brit got this from her husband for her 30th birthday is a really incredible memory. And this watch will truly mean the world to her. And I love that. And because of that, there's not going to be anything negative I say about this watch. Apart from the fact that I wouldn't wear it. I, I don't, I, how do I say this? I've just never got behind leather straps. It's something that I just don't think I can get behind because I kind of wear my watches on the bone. I'm not saying they're wrong, just not my taste. Okay, the next watch in the watch roll really needs no introduction. Another watch I talk about borderline too much, the Tudor Black Bay 58. 
So this was my first watch with some pretty big beefy specifications. This was my first dive watch and I credit this one. Shameless plug for Bark and Jack. <laughs> Adrian, give, give Brett some free straps. She's repping those NATO straps. For being the one that pushed me into the deep end of watches. I was kind of into watches before. I was just swimming along the shallow end. See what she did there, swimming. It's a, it's a diving watch. But this one, it just captured me in a different way. I do, I do love the fact that Brit has the 54 as well as the 58. That's a really nice trajectory in the watch journey. And then it opens up a Black Bay Heritage 41 for her to get next. Now, personally, I wouldn't have gone with the blue dial. I think there's certain touches on the black that I prefer. For example, that gold splash or red splash on the bezel. And the fact that Drew actually has it. So... I love this watch and there's not much bad that I can say about Tudor because in terms of affordability, they're brilliant. One thing that I do want to see from Tudor, hopefully in the future, is them adding that Cosk and Meta certified movement to the rest of the Black Bay Heritage and the Black Bay 58 lines. That would be cool. Hearing side of this, it completely blew my mind that this analog technology- By the way, Brit's flatlays are absolutely fantastic. Can you believe that Brit doesn't have any photography and video experience before YouTube? Her productions are amazing. So Brit, seriously, awesome job. Watch in the roll, the moon swatch. <laughs> this was a gift from a local watchmaker friend, Finn, but Finn got this right when it was fresh, when no one could get one of these. He ended up going to Switzerland on holiday, and apparently these weren't a very big deal out there because he came home with three. Yeah, so we did the same thing. Uh, Adrian, myself, and another gentleman went to Switzerland to Zermatt just as these were launched and we managed to pick them up. For some reason, the hype seemed to be primarily the UK. Now, although this one isn't what I would go for, it looks kind of like a Mojave Desert. I do like the marketing that went behind the Moon Swatch. And you can't say that it wasn't a genius because of the Moon Swatch. The Moon Watch sales subsequently went up 50%, and that was backed up by Mr. Hayek himself. That's an incredible feat. Now, I like the fact that Brits actually put a NATO strap to match the, the kind of color of this watch because the strap, the Velcro strap, isn't amazing. And it's a fun wee touch. She, she got it as a gift. She didn't buy it. I quite like it. Not the color I would go for, but, you know, it's collecting. It's having fun, and that's what this is. Let's move on to Rolex land. I like Rolex land. Rolex land's good. Rolex land's best land. Rolex watches. Let's start with the Oyster Perpetual. <sighs> so this is my OP124200, 34 millimeters, black dial. This was my first ever Rolex. And if disaster struck and I had to sell all my watches for whatever reason, and I could only keep one, this is the one I would keep. Wrong decision. You should keep the Daytona because the Daytona looks so much better. I, in my opinion, Rolex Oyster Perpetuals are just, just meh, meh. You know what I mean? They're just yeah, Like they're great and I love them. They're a Rolex. Who doesn't love a Rolex? But you look at them and there's just, you're just like meh, meh. It's a great watch and it represents something I never dreamed I'd ever own in a place in life I never thought I'd be in. I like the sentimental attachment. I do. I love that sentimental attachment. It's just mm. <laughs> This is my Rolex Daytona. This one was actually allocated to my husband. He's the one who got the call from the authorized dealer. It was about two weeks after he'd bought his uh, Patek Philippe Aquanaut. We usually I, can we, I need to see your husband's watch collection, Britt. Uh, we need to arrange a call. How about we get a collaboration where we go through your husband's watch collection together? I think if you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments because that would be sick. The fact that your husband has... Oh, that's... Whew. There was absolutely no way he was getting two Grail watches, two top tier Grail watches within two weeks and I was getting nothing. Quite right, Britt. Keep him in check. Uh, but I also really like the Daytona. It's one of the few Rolex professional models that looks good on me. My name was down for one too. Oh gosh, the, the more I'm telling this story, the worse it makes me look. <laughs> Doesn't make you look bad at all. The, the Rolex Daytona is absolutely incredible. And actually it's one of my dream 
my dream watches. Specifically, the Rolex Daytona steel bezeled with the white face. Now, I know that they got they got discontinued. I can't remember the exact model number, and I don't want to say it because I might get it wrong, but when I was younger, aspirationally, I would always look to my dad. And I remember, he's since sold it, but I remember one time my dad was wearing a Rolex Daytona with a steel bezel, and I loved that watch. Into Omega, and if you've seen my most recent Speedmaster video, you'll know this is the most special watch in my collection. It is the kindest gift I've ever received. So this is a vintage Omega Speedmaster, reference 145012. I believe this is the first reference to have the now staple liar lugs. And this really marks when the Omega Speedmaster established the DNA of the Speedy as we know her today. I feel like you could see this from far away and you could easily think this was a watch that was released this year. Omega Speedmaster Professional, the first watch on the moon, it is just an absolute staple in the industry. But what's more of a staple is when people go for these classic watches, these vintage watches with so much personality and so much history. The fact that Brit got this it is a gift as well. Bloody good gift. Whoever gave you that, then thank them. This looks incredible. I honestly believe that a watch with personality, a watch with wear and tear, a watch that tells a story is something that can't be replaced. And this for sure can't be replaced. And, and I probably, I'm I'm just guessing because I need to know exactly the model and how much it was bought for. You're probably making a good buck on this because it looks it looks pretty vintage. I don't really know where the leather straps come from. Not my thing, but let's keep going. Same from this model onwards. But this really is one of my most cherished possessions. It's the kindest gift. It's the kindest thing I've ever received. And she ended up messaging me saying, wishing you a speedy recovery. I want you to keep my Speedmaster. That is, that is an amazing story. And I will want an amazing, amazing lady for doing that. That is some of the kindest, one of the most kind things that you could ever do, especially when someone's in, in a bad place. So I will thank you. And Britt, you're looking great. Made a speed recovery. I'm so glad that you're feeling better. This is my Cartier Tank Solo. And this watch has seen better days. Uh, that's definitely the daily beater. I can see that for, from a glance. Good grief. So this was my first ever luxury watch. My husband gave me this for our first wedding anniversary. And for a long time, this was my- Again, you've got an amazing sentimental attachment there. So you, it's really hard to criticize or it's really hard to, to say anything about a watch when there is a sentimental attachment there. I mean, I've got sentimental attachments to watches that just look a bit weird, a bit strange. Cartier's tank, actually, I really like it. I think it's pretty big staple in the industry. However, between that and a GLC reversal, I don't know. Micro brands in my collection. So I have three micro brand watches. And can we just say as well, I love the creative alternatives to the watch box that micro brands often deliver. That's true, because micro brands want more attention, because they need to draw the eye in different ways, they normally rely on packaging, marketing, different strategies and different things that make it pretty experiential to get a micro brand, and that's part of the attraction. So, yeah, I don't know where that came from. Just thought I'd say it. Practical. So this watch roll is from Miller Watches, a micro brand here in the UK. You get a matching watch roll with whatever color watch you buy, which is awesome. So I've got the black scuba automatic, 300 meters of water resistance, the sil- uh, nah. The SW200 movement in there. And this was a gift from the owner of the brand and my red bar Bristol friend, Liam. Like he's, it's- Nah. Next, we have the Nomadic Marais on the NATO strap. See that? That's cooler. I like that. I like that splash of yellow in there. I like that it's more striking and a more divey watch. I think the other one is just maybe a little bit bulky for me. I also like the kind of uh, texture to the NATO strap there. That's cool. Honestly, this is just a bad pairing. Like this is aesthetically not my best work. I think I think aesthetically it is. This is this is where the watch industry is brilliant because Brit's tastes are different to mine, different to Drew's, different to Nico Lennard's, different to Adrian Barker's. We've all got different tastes and different things that we like, and that's why I love this. And none of these watches that she has are bad. I just want to 
put that out there. It's all about personal preference. We have the Zealous Aurora. Can't tell whether I like this or not. That's actually quite cool. I like the dye. What is going on there? It was always sold out straight away. So when they reached out, it was a big fat yes from me. I love this titanium case, classic looking watch. And I went for a more funky dial. I don't wear this one as much as I should. And that is Brit's watch collection. Brit is absolutely incredible. She's so enthusiastic. She's an extremely talented videographer and YouTuber, and she is an inspiration to so many people. And I absolutely love her work. So if you have the time, please head over to her channel, give her a subscribe, give her a follow, whatever it might be, and give her some support because she is amazing. And all of these watches I do love in their own way. It's just, it's just fun to critique watches, even though you probably would get them yourself if you could afford them. Thank you guys so much for watching this Chisholm Hunter video. My name is Harrison, as always. And if you've enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. I'll see you soon.